as big as the universe is, he looks down at us and mm -hmm. sees something extra special, so. Yeah, okay. Think what's your favorite? Yeah. Sorry? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, my favorite? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, I just, whenever I, I watch, you know, nature documentaries, I'm just in awe. Just, just of, you know, we have so much to learn. And, you know, just everything works so nicely together. And, you know, Jehovah's made sure to make sure everything was looked after just mm -hmm. you know um, yeah it's just 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 the awe of it all just just to be able to know that we can learn so much forever and um, yeah yeah it's just we'll need forever to learn it for sure yeah, yeah. 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 we still won't even know it all so yeah. <laughs> exactly This whole part of the conversation was a little slow and somewhat pointless to us, but I don't know if these ladies really saw it that way, though I'm sure they had to feel the awkwardness at times. It's heartbreaking how their minds are so saturated in watchtower framework like this. The one woman mentioned that Jehovah looked down and saw something special in us. I probably could have jumped in there and corrected that a bit to point out that we were made in the image of God which is what makes us so precious to him. Watchtower also seems to focus a lot on how eternity will involve so much learning, which on its own is a true statement. Sadly, what they seem to mean is learning Watchtower teachings and more about the physical earth. It's all so shallow. And it's certainly what all the images in their publication suggest, isn't it? Tigers to ride, snakes to pet, baskets of fruit to eat, and watchtower studies to conduct, all for a thousand years to prove their loyalty to Jehovah's organization. The thing is, all those who are in Christ will indeed have an eternity to get to learn so many things. Not one of them will include any sort of watchtower publication. And all that we do get to explore will be exciting because all of creation is for the glory of God, and we will get to see that and praise him more and more. And above all of that, we will get to know Him more and more and praise Him. We get to be in His presence and worship Him freely without fear, sin, or death. What literally on earth could be better than that? As a point of interest, count how many times the one woman uses the word beautiful here. You can really hear the brainwashing coming through since it's used so constantly in their productions and publications to subtly promote themselves. Okay, my screen just turned off here. Okay, so um, I guess, is it reasonable to believe that the universe and everything in it were designed? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we've covered that. <laughs> we've covered that. Okay, so, so paragraph five, I'll read um, paragraph five. So in Genesis chapter one, the Bible describes the origin of the earth and life on it. Can you trust that, that account? Uh, or is it just a myth? And we'll play the video. And we're gonna discuss these two questions. So we can keep these questions in mind um, while we're watching this. But does the, does the Bible teach that the earth and life on it were created in six 24-hour days. And do you think that the Bible's account of creation is logical and reasonable? Why? why? So we'll just watch this video. I'll do it the same way. That was kind of loud last time. I'm going to turn my phone. Just a little bit. Not too bad, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just a couple. Turn. And if you can hold it a little bit over to your left. A little, I think your left. My left. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Genesis 
suggest that there is a creator. But the account is often misunderstood or even dismissed as a myth. Is what the Bible says about the origin of the universe plausible? Scientists estimate that the universe is 14 billion years old. This implies that the universe, including Earth, had a beginning. The Bible agrees. Genesis 1 1 reads In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The account does not say when or how the universe began. Rather, it focuses on the creative process that took place on Earth over six periods of time, which the Bible calls days. Were these six 24 hour days as many believe? No. The Hebrew word used in the Bible for day can refer to various lengths of time. Genesis even summarizes the six days of creation as one day. The day that Jehovah God made earth and heaven. Each day in Genesis chapter 1 must have spanned extremely long periods of time. The account's perspective is also important. The writer describes the creative periods as they would have appeared to an observer on the earth. Had someone been there, he would have seen events that started in one period and then progress into the following periods. Light penetrates the atmosphere to reveal alternating day and night. Earth was covered with water and vapor filled the air. The dense clouds lifted from the waters that covered the earth, forming an expansive sky between them. Water receded to uncover dry ground and the first plants appeared. The atmosphere cleared further to reveal the sun and the moon. God created living creatures in the sea and flying creatures above. And in the last period, God created land animals and humans. In harmony with the Genesis account, the Bible says, of course, every house is constructed by someone, but the one who constructed all things is God. The Bible does not speak in scientific detail, but its account of creation is logical and reasonable. Question. Does the Bible teach that the earth and life on it were created in six 24 hour days? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's different views on that within Christianity. Some people believe in the old earth or day age theory, and some people believe in young earth creationism, uh, literal six days of creation. So, um, I'm a young earth creationist personally, but um, I know Christians, brothers and sisters in the faith who believe in an old earth, so, you know, we don't consider it a, a big thing to worry about, you know? Uh -huh. So, so, um, it, like, the, you, you, you said you believed in, um, new earth, so what is that one again? Young I, earth? Young earth younger? creation? Yeah. So is that 24 hour days, or is that, yeah. is that like a span of? periods of time. 24 hour days, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think it's pretty safe to say that I caught her off guard with my response. Christians have had meaningful and rigorous conversations about the age of the earth for, well, quite some time now. But for JWs, there is no discussion. There's just what they're told. So terms like young earth versus old earth and day age theory or gap theory are totally foreign to them. I think she probably expected our responses to this video to be quite different than they were, so they were both left scrambling for ways to deal with us, especially since we're not secular evolutionists or anything like that. 
we love the Bible. And they have to be aware of that by this point, right? That said, this wasn't a spot we wanted to get stuck in for a long time because our goal was never to convince them of a young earth or to win the debate on that. The goal is always to bring it back to Jesus and the gospel. So the account had brought out how, you know, how days for Jehovah is not the same um, days that, you know, in, in a human perspective, like the account went on to say a little bit uh, about how the day of Jehovah, you know, he created all these things, so he put those into a day. And then there's another scripture how Jehovah, you know, how um, a day to Jehovah could be like a thousand years to us. Um, Why don't we look, I'm just going to see if I can find that scripture. Uh, is that familiar scripture for yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. A day is to Jehovah. A day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I have that somewhere. Second Peter, it's in. Oh, Second Peter three ten. Yeah. Oh no, sorry, 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 wrong one. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Jehovah's day will come like a thief. Uh, I'm just looking. Three and eight. Second Peter three and eight. Three and eight is it? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. One sec. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, However, yeah. do not let this be your notice, beloved ones, that one day is with Jehovah as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. Yeah. So that, um, like, contextually, that's actually talking about how um, Jehovah is not restrained by time. He created time, right? So um, looking at, is the judgment coming, and um, when will it come, and, you know, did he forget about us, and that kind of thing. And then, you know, and then, so you've got this combination of he's not constrained by time, he hasn't forgot us, and also he's merciful and taking as long as he is to bring judgment. So, um that one, I, I have heard that applied to um, the creation account, but I think that the context there seems to be quite different. So, um, and also you have the, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. That, you know what I mean? Then if you're going to take that literally, then, um, you know, would you then say that the earth was like the, the days of creation were a thousand years each day? Well, we don't, we, we, like the Bible doesn't give us an expe- an exact detail of how, mm-hmm. e- how long each creation, each right. day of creation was, yeah, but yeah. Um, I think they're like, it's epics, like it's, it's, you know, each day to Jehovah, like it was a day for Jehovah, but for us, um, yeah, it helps with language translation too, like the Bible was not written in English, so we use the word day. Yeah, it yom. It's, it's yom in Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, I liked how they mentioned in the video too that the writer described the created periods as they would have appeared to one on Earth. Sure. So they would have seen yeah. the start of whatever was happening, and then the end of that happening. So the start of creation of the plants, and then yeah, the end of well, that that's... period where now the Earth was full of plants. Sure, yeah, but do you think Jehovah yeah. actually needed billions of years, or could he have actually done it? Does he mm. have the power to do it in 24-hour days? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, though, I was, it's not, like, a ahead. big thing to for us to, you know, worry about. So, like, if you want to keep going in the chapter, I don't I don't consider that something to, you know, oh, to yeah. worry about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just something... Um, yeah. Anyway. Um. Yeah. I mean, you could you could send me articles, and I could send you articles, and we could go round and round and round. And that's fine. I've done it with other people, and it's totally fine. You know, just friendly and and everything. But uh, 
I, I think in the end you can you can have long, long discussions and <laughs> not necessarily really get anywhere. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yeah, you, um, yeah. Maybe I, if you'd like, I, I can do a bit of research into that too and just uh, show some different Bible accounts. But anyway, um, it doesn't like we we can we can keep moving on. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, but the universe, as the video brought out, you know, um, it did have a beginning. Scientists recognized that the universe had a beginning. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so it's logical that in the beginning, God created. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there was a beginning to life for us here. And, uh, um, so do you think, well, yeah, you, you, I, I know that you agree, but I think that it's, it's logical, but um, out of your perspective, uh, why do you think it's logical why, or reasonable that um, God created everything? Well, like you, you've already mentioned, he's, he's all-powerful and creative. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. So Genesis one and one. Uh, did you want to read Genesis one and one? Yep. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. This is my problem. I keep getting ahead of myself because <laughs> we didn't. So scientists say that the universe had a beginning, and uh, how does their conclusion compare with? what we just read in the Bible. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even scientists recognize that there was a beginning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some people... Oh, sorry. Were you going to say something? No. Oh, okay. Um, so some people wonder if God used evoli- evolution to create life. Um, what? And then we'll read these scriptures. Um and then we'll ask the following question. Um, does the Bible teach that God made a simple life form and then let it evolve into fish, mammals, and humans, or did he create all the basic kinds of life? So we'll read Genesis 1, 21, 25, and 27. So did you want to read those? Mm-hmm. Okay. And God created the sea, the great sea creatures, and all living creatures that move and swarm in the waters according to their kinds, and every winged flying creature according to its kind. And God saw that it was very, that it was good. And 25, and God went on to make the wild animals of the earth according to their kinds, and the domestic animals according to their kinds, and all the creeping animals of the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. 27, and God went on to create the man in his image. In God's image, he created him male and female he created them thank you okay so what do you think does the bible teach that god made a simple life form and then let it evolve into fish mammals and not. humans or did he create <laughs> the basic kinds yeah, he created the kinds. I think that's pretty clear, and it, it's clear in nature itself, right? Like, they've never proven evolution. It's, it's no, just not all, there. They're all theories. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, a, a dog will always be a dog. Yep. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, they can do, like, micro-evolution, right, where they do- dogs can become different kinds of dogs, but they're still within that kind, species, right? They're yeah. still, they're still right. dogs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Dr. Lyle actually speaks on that quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, he has a lot of... You know, um, he makes jokes about different dogs, the kinds he likes and doesn't and stuff like that. But he shows scientifically why dogs are always dogs and cats are always cats and elephants are always elephants. And, you know, that it it doesn't ever cross in between kinds. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's logical, right? That's. (laughs) Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You have to really reach far to try and get into evolution. It's a. It's really just rebellion again. Mm-hmm. It's just trying to get awa- around who God is mm-hmm. and what He's done. Yeah, suppressing yeah. the truth. Right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, did you want to read six? Six. Okay. 
Humans are a unique creation of God. We are unlike the animals that Jehovah created. Read Genesis 1.26 and then discuss this question. Because we are made in God's image, what does our ability to show love and compassion suggest about God's personality? And 126 is, Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, so that they will have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the, the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So this shows a little bit about, you know, um, Jehovah and his personality. So because we're made in his image, what does our ability to show love and compassion suggest about God's personality? Yeah, it gives us a little a little hint of of his compassion and his ability to love and that he is love, yeah. In a very small way, because we are, you know, nothing compared to him, so... <laughs> For us, he gave us a responsibility to Mm -hmm. to look after the animals, to care for them. Which humans are failing uh, in many ways. Not all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's there's many who are still doing, you know, looking after animals beautifully. But Mm -hmm. I mean, it's quite sad to see um, when we don't see them, you know, in in harmony with God's God's will. Mm -hmm. So we already know that, uh, well, some people will argue against that no matter, you know, you can talk till you're blue in the face and reason, but some people just don't want to accept that, kind of touched on that, but there's... Yeah, they're still in rebellion, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for the summary, Jehovah created the universe and life, Uh, just for the review questions. What does the Bible teach about the origin of the universe? There was a beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That God created and mm-hmm. yeah, that there was a beginning. Yeah. So did uh, God let the different kinds of life evolve from a simple form, or did He create them all? Yeah, he created them with his spoken word. Yeah. And what is unique about humans? Yeah, we already talked about that too. <laughs> <laughs> right at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> this is summary recap. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. You're made in his image. Yeah. Yeah. And we can have a warm, beautiful relationship with him, hey? Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's a gift to have a spir- to have a spiritual need. Right? Well, to I, have I it to have the, the fulfillment yeah. of that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and be able to fulfill it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's a, yeah. So he's knows the whole what's point. good for us. Yeah, well, and he it's his it's all for his glory, right? So mm-hmm. it's all about him, so that we're even created and given the ability to to seek to glorify him and to to seek after him and his glory he's yeah. the most beautiful of all right so yeah. that's something that we i mean i think in it there's a degree where you can look at that that there's a almost an instinct about that in animals too but really it's completely different than what you know human understanding and capacity to yeah speak and and think and pray and mm-hmm. communicate and love and feel and yeah yeah mm-hmm. Realistically, we should have been able to get through this chapter pretty quickly, but they really felt the need to draw it out as long as they could. I do wonder if that's because they enjoyed having a topic that we could mostly agree on instead of having to face hard questions from us. In the next video, we'll carry on with the topic for quite a while longer, even though we really are at the end of the chapter. You can't blame me and my friend for how slowly we're going at this point.